Hello and welcome everyone to the fourth session of the DuraCloud Brown Bag series. My name is Carissa Smith and I am the partner specialist working on the DuraCloud project, which is both a managed service and an open source technology offered by the DuraSpace organization. To find out more about either DuraCloud or DuraSpace, I encourage you to visit their respective websites at duracloud.org and duraspace.org. Please note that your audio for today's call is disabled but I heartily encourage participation through the chat feature located in the bottom right of your screen. I just sent a chat message through this feature and you can simply see uh, via the screen share I'm highlighting where the uh, chat feature is located as well as a little icon bubble next to it uh, for and sending your chat. Uh, there will be plenty of time at the end of today's session for questions. Um, so feel free to send them via, along via the chat either as I go through the demo or wait until the end to send your uh, questions. And again, at the end of today's session, I will be sure to answer all of the questions that have come through via the chat, either throughout the demo or at the end. With that, I'd like to get our brown bag session started. Today I will be focusing on preserving digital media in DuraCloud, as the slide in front of you states. Give me just one moment while I minimize and bring up the correct screen here. So the, the first thing that I wanted to start with today is the DuraCloud administrator interface, the DuraCloud web, ab web application, which in this case is located at demo.duracloud.org. Um, but as a customer of the DuraCloud managed service, your DuraCloud account would be located at your institution name.duracloud.org. That is something that you could certainly customize. Um, I'm simply going to log in to my DuraCloud account through this web application. I'll note that the web application itself is, is just that. It's a web application that sits on top of the cloud storage providers that you have decided to integrate your account with. Um, and it allows you to add content, run services, um, view your content, stream your content, etc. And again, it sits on top of the, the uh, commercial and non-commercial cloud storage providers that you've decided to integrate your, your account with. And that, again, is a, is a decision that's made on a customer-by-customer -customer basis. Um, to, to familiarize you with the DuraCloud screen, and I apologize if this is a review for some of the folks who I've seen on these brown bag sessions before, but I thought we'd start um, first with uh, an orientation to the DuraCloud interface itself. In the top left-hand uh, part of your screen, you'll see the, uh, in this case, the Amazon Web Services logo. That gives you an indication that the content that you'll see below that is currently being stored in Amazon S3, their, uh, Amazon's commercial cloud storage area. Uh, this DuraCloud account that I'm demoing with today is actually integrated with another commercial cloud storage provider named Rackspace. And to switch between the two cloud storage providers, you simply move to the right of your screen and select your other provider from the pull-down window. You'll see that the interface itself looks remarkably the same with the exception that uh, on the left-hand side you'll see the Rackspace Cloud logo and a couple different spaces here on the left-hand side of your screen. Um, again, one of, the, um, one of the real use cases of DuraCloud is that it integrates with various uh, commercial and non-commercial cloud storage providers and again that really insulates you, the customer, from vendor lock-in. You can easily move your content from one vendor to another, um, decide that you know in six months Rackspace is really not, uh, not of interest any longer and you can decide to pull your content out of Rackspace and store it all on Amazon. And DuraCloud, uh, the, the platform itself, will continually be offering new uh, cloud storage providers. Um, within the next six months we plan to launch our first non-commercial cloud storage provider um, through the San Diego Supercomputer Center uh, cloud storage. So again, DuraCloud itself will constantly be adding new cloud storage providers for you to choose from as well. So again, navigating back here to my Amazon storage area on the right-hand side of my screen. I wanted to again orient you to the interface itself before we actually delve into the digital media uh, preservation capabilities within DuraCloud. So you'll note that the interface itself is laid out in a left to right manner and as you move further right on your screen you'll get more details. The leftmost column in uh, DuraCloud is the spaces column and again spaces is a term we use uh, that could probably more accurately be called a content container or a content um, 
a content holder. Um, it is somewhat analogous to a folder on your local machine, though we don't have nested folders uh, capabilities uh, within DuraCloud as you would expect on your local machine. We don't have nested spaces within spaces within DuraCloud. But it is somewhat analogous to a content folder, content container, content bucket, uh, any of those any of those terms uh, could be used. If you click on one of these spaces, so I'm going to click on my Carissa Images space, in the center of your, your screen you'll see the list of content items that are currently held within that space or currently stored in that space. You can see a total of 11 content items. And then on the right hand side of your screen in the detail panel, you'll see further information about the space. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is this right hand panel is always your detail panel and it describes the details of whatever it is you've selected. So in this case I have a space selected, it's highlighted in a dark gray color. So I see the space details here on the right hand side of the screen. Um, I'm going to go through some of these details uh, rather quickly um, as I cover them in more detail in other brown bag sessions. However, if there's something of interest that you'd like me to uh, talk a little bit more about at the end, feel free to type a question into the chat. Or um, if there is a feature in particular that you'd like me to go really in depth on in, in a future brown bag session, feel free to submit that via the chat feature as well. I am I'm more than welcome uh, to take suggestions about future brown bag session topics. So again, back here in the space detail panel, uh, below that you can see uh, the number, total number of items held, uh, currently stored or held within the space, the date the space was created, of course. And then I think probably one of the most important features here is the date of the last health check, as well as the status. So DuraCloud itself, as part of, as part of its package, will um, periodically check the health of your content that's stored in DuraCloud, all of your content, not just a certain space or a certain, certain storage provider. It checks all of the content. Um, and then it will print out uh, in the web interface the date that it was checked, as well as uh, the status. In this case, it was a su successful um, bit integrity check. Uh, therefore, you can see the nice green indicator bar. And obviously, it reports the success here. If you want to see a further detail about the report itself and what the, what the um, health check found, you simply click the, re the report link at the end of the green line. You will get a pop-up window with e even further detail about the health check itself. It essentially lists every single content item within the space, um, as well as its um, stored MD5 values. And again, DuraCloud uses MD5 checksum values uh, to assure the health of your content. And you can see on the rightmost uh, part of this pop-up window that each of these content items was valid, meaning the stored uh, checksum value matched the recalculated checksum value. I won't go into further detail about our, how our services run, as that was a topic I believe I covered either last month or the, the previous month in a brown bag session. Um, so, uh, which was recorded in, and is on YouTube, so if you're interested in how our integrity services run, I encourage you to check out that, that recording. But again, essentially, our health check services run periodically over all of your content in DuraCloud and then report um, the results of that run, that integrity check run within the interface itself so that you can constantly come in and check the health of your content and uh, rest assured that the content that you thought you had stored in DuraCloud is indeed healthy. Directly below the health check, you'll see um, some further details and graphics uh, regarding first the history of the content uh, that you've stored in this space. It stores both the uh, history of additions and deletions of content. You can see, since this is a demo account, <laughs> I change the content uh, quite regularly. And then below that, you can see a further breakout in terms of the file types that are stored within this, uh, within this space. And then below that, you have the ability to add both properties and tags on a space level within DuraCloud. These are simply name value uh, and one word tags that get stored with that space at the storage provider level. If I click on one of the content items within this space, um, you'll see here on the right hand side of your screen that the interface updates to show you the content detail on the right hand side in the right panel. Uh, directly below the content detail heading itself, is uh, not only the name of the content item, but it's also its storage URL. 
Um, the storage URL is, is important to note because that allows you to then embed this, this item, whether it's an image or a document or um, a, a video, et cetera, into your own applications, essentially to serve content from DuraCloud. So this is the, the storage URL that's available if you click on this link. Directly below that, uh, you'll see the MIME type that's associated with this content item. And then below that, you have a couple different buttons, action buttons that you can take on a content item uh, level. You can certainly copy this content item to another space or to rack space if you wish. You can download the content item at any point in time. You can view it and you can also delete it if you'd like. Below that, you'll see again further details about this individual content item in terms of the space where it's currently stored, its size, as well as its modified date. And then also you'll note that we store the checksum value. And again, this is the checksum value of the content item when it was first uh, uploaded or ingested into DuraCloud. The DuraCloud itself will calculate the content item's checksum and then store that uh, with that content item for the length of its existence in DuraCloud. So until you delete uh, this JaneAustin.gif image, the checksum will always be stored with this content item. And that's how our integrity checking service um, can ensure the health of your content because it stores the original uh, checksum value. Directly below that, you, again, you'll see properties and tags at a content item level within DuraCloud. And again, you can add those at a content item level or at a space level within DuraCloud within this user interface. Stepping back a moment, um, again, this was a very brief overview of the DuraCloud administrative interface, the user interface that you can uh, use to add content, run services, etc. Um, I just noted that you can add content through this interface, so that is one piece that I wanted to touch on briefly, and then I will go in more detail um, for the media preservation use case, how you would add content. One of the easiest ways to add content to DuraCloud is through this Add Items button here in the middle part of your Content Items panel. Essentially, you'll be presented with a pop-up window that will allow you to navigate to your local, um, your local machine or local network server and upload uh, multiple files and folders. It is a multi-select tool, so you can upload uh, quite a bit of content. And again, it leverages your internet connection and uh, your browser to upload content to DuraCloud. Um, this is really great for adding, you know, a couple collections of content, a couple files, a couple folders here and there. Um, but if you have a very large collection, um, I would recommend our second option for adding content. And I think this is probably more useful for the media uh, use cases that I wanted to touch on today. Um, and the second way is to use our synchronization utility. Uh, within DuraCloud, you have the ability to download the DuraCloud synchronization utility. It's free of charge. Um, it is a command line Java tool that you would run locally. And again, I will show you how to use that in just one moment. Let me bring it up here. So I, I downloaded the synchronization utility from our documentation earlier today. And again, this is free of charge, readily available. You could download it today if you wish. I will show you the uh, URL where you can download the synchronization utility. Um, I simply stored it on my desktop. And now I'm going to interact with it at the command line to add content. Um, I apologize for, for you, those of you who are, are not technical, and I hope this does not bore you. Um, but let me just type in a few quick commands here to show you uh, how you need to interact with the, the uh, sync tool. So um, for those of you who are familiar, you uh, get the sync tool started by typing java-dar and then the sync tool version. Um, and then you have a couple different configuration uh, infor information that you can add to the synchronization tool to upload your content. Um, stepping back for a moment, the sync tool essentially will be uh, allow you to point it at a local, local directory and then upload all of your content to DuraCloud. Essentially, it's a bulk upload tool that will continue to run in the interim uh, in the background on your machine until all of your content has been uploaded to DuraCloud. Um, or you can run it in a true synchronization fashion, meaning that you can keep it running in the background on your machine or your local server watching, uh, watching for any changes that are made to local content. And the synchronization tool keeps track of any changes in its log, in its log files and will upload any changes that are made to content or any new additions to content. 
So again, just to kind of to recap what the synchronization utility will do, um, it can be run as a bulk upload tool, so essentially upload um, multiple gigabytes of content from your local machine, or it can be run um, as a true synchronization. It can continue to watch your local directories for any changes that are made and upload content. So with that, a uh, description of the sync tool, uh, how do you configure it to run? Um, so the first uh, configuration option you'll need is the host name of your DuraCloud account. In this case, it's simply the URL of your DuraCloud instance, which in this case is demo.duracloud.org. You'll also need the space that you'd like to upload your content to. Uh, in this case, it's Carissa Videos, and you can see that to the left uh, of my terminal window, you'll see my Carissa video space already created in my DuraCloud account. Uh, do keep in mind that you do need to create your, your space um, before you run the sync tool. So the synchronization utility does need a DuraCloud space where it can store content. Uh, the next configuration option is the local directory where you have your content items stored. Uh, in this case, it's on my desktop, so bear with me while I write out the the path of my videos folder. Uh, the second uh, configuration path that you'll need to add is a work directory. And again, uh, the synchronization utility generates log files that will store it in a local uh, work directory. And this allows it to um, keep track of the content that is uploaded to DuraCloud, any changes that are made. And essentially, if um, your computer happened to restart or stop, um, if you uh, got the synchronization utility up and running again, it would refer back to these logs and essentially pick up where it left off. So again, you just have to have a, a local folder set up um, so the synchronization utility can print out its, uh, its log files. And then there are a few other configuration options to add. As you might expect, you need a, a username, which is not username as well as a password, which <clears throat> you can add. The last configuration option that I wanted to spend a little time on uh, discussing today is the dash M configuration. Um, for folks who are preserving very large uh, media files, whether they be audio or video in DuraCloud, um, we have a hard uh, 5 gigabyte storage limit that is imposed on us by both Amazon and Rackspace, and it's a pretty common cloud storage limitation. And we realized uh, in our past use cases with, with folks who are trying to preserve both uh, video and audio files, preservation quality audio and video files in DuraCloud, that 5 gigabytes is usually um, not quite enough. Uh, preservation media files are typically, or can be, quite a bit larger than that. So built within the synchronization utility is something uh, that we have termed the chunking tool. Essentially, it will... Um, chunk large files over a certain limit which you can set um, into their individual uh, smaller sized pieces and store those individual chunks in DuraCloud um, <clears throat> for you so that you can store your large uh, audio and video files within DuraCloud. So in this case the dash M uh, is indicating what size gigabyte, gigabyte chunks you'd like to uh, store in DuraCloud. Uh, the dash M1 indicates that I want my content to be chunked into one gigabyte increments. So any file that's over the one gigabyte limit will be chunked into one gigabyte uh, files and then stored in DuraCloud. And again, I'll give you an idea of what this looks like when we get into when when I show you uh, what what it looks like in DuraCloud in just a moment. Um, from a preservation and integrity standpoint. Not only does the synchronization utility actually chunk the files into their individual one gigabyte sized pieces. Um, I'll note one gigabyte here is a little arbitrary. You can uh, chunk them into one, two, three, four, or five gigabyte file. Um, again, we do have a five gigabyte file limit uh, in terms of the size you can store. Um, essentially, the limitation uh, whether you choose one, two, three, or four gigabytes is based on your upload uh, bandwidth and network capabilities. And again, uh, another thing to keep in mind when you're um, uploading content to DuraCloud um, that is typically larger, uh, that like media typically is, uh, keep in mind your local bandwidth restrictions and your network capabilities. Um, we have found that one, one or two gigabytes is the um, 
real world scenario that most uh, internet connections can tolerate without um, packets dropping off of your uh, of, off of your content items or or networking timeouts. So again, uh, from a real world uh, standpoint, one or two gigabyte sized files uh, seem to very easily be uploaded into DuraCloud. But anything over that, we found we have um, a higher likelihood of issues being experienced when you're using a, an internet connection to upload, you know, three or four or five gigabyte sized files. Not to say that you can't, if you have a really great internet connection, go for it. Um, but uh, we have found that with most users, uh, one or two gigabyte file is, is the largest that their internet connection can withstand. And again, once you get those um, files into DuraCloud, we do check the integrity. Um, this chunking tool, first of all, will calculate the checksum, the integrity value, for your uh, full length file. And then it will also calculate the uh, checksums for each of the individual constituent pieces, the one gigabyte chunks. And it will store uh, all of those checksums, both the original uh, checksum as well as the individual piece checksums within DuraCloud in a manifest file. And our DuraCloud service will then check the integrity of those individual chunks as you store them in DuraCloud. So again, we are ensuring that the, um, the, the preservation uh, ensuring the preservation and the health of your of your content even if it is in the chunks when it's stored in DuraCloud. And then um, one last thing, <laughs> and then I'll actually show you what this looks like, is that um, DuraCloud provides a corollary retrieval tool which also uh, has a stitching capability built in. So essentially it looks exactly like the synchronization utility, it's a command line tool that um, just works in the reverse. You point it at a DuraCloud instance and download content from DuraCloud to your local machine and our tool will automatically uh, recombine your, your chunked files into your original file. And again, built within that is the checksum capabilities ensuring that your original file that we chunked, stored in the cloud in chunks, is stitched together and you're, and, and you're left with, when you download it from DuraCloud, your original file uh, with the original checksum. So we have a, a, full, <laughs> a full 360 available um, for storing very large files within DuraCloud that is not available with, uh, should you store content with the individual cloud storage providers themselves like Rackspace or Amazon. They will expect you to upload uh, content that meets their limits and they don't provide additional tools to help you create those chunks and ensure the integrity of your large uh, files. So you simply fill out um, the configuration options with the sync tool and hit enter. Uh, the synchronization utility will run and upload your content from your local, uh, your local directory and store it in DuraCloud. Um, I won't actually make you watch uh, the sync tool run, but it will print out a report and, and show you how many content items it's uploaded, how many it's working on, and how many are still in the queue. Let me minimize that for a minute. In my Carissa videos uh, folder, excuse me, my space, you'll see that uh, previously today I had added three uh, MP4 files. These are relatively small MP4 files. And uh, in another DuraCloud account, I have a couple chunks that are being stored. So here you can see, um, <clears throat> let's focus on the first uh, four content items. You can see a content that was a original content item that was chunked into three constituent parts, chunk 0000, 0001, and 0002, as well as the manifest file that was also created um, through our chunking capability. And again, this is how we would store very large media files in DuraCloud. Again, ones that are over the multiple gigabyte um, limit. Um, you can see if you click on one of these chunks, even though my session has timed out. One moment, everyone, sorry about that. If you click on one of these constituent chunks, you can see that there is a checksum associated with this chunk that is different from uh, the second chunk. And again, DuraCloud will ensure that these uh, one gigabyte chunks are, or in this case, one megabyte chunks, are um, indeed um, 
healthy as they're stored in DuraCloud, and then we will use the attached uh, manifest file that our service created to uh, recombine those media chunks um, should you use the retrieval tool to download your content back to DuraCloud. Again, we will stitch up your content items and ensure that the original file matches our restitched together uh, file that had been stored in DuraCloud. And again, I want to point out this is for preserving media files. This is not touching on the access side of things. Um, I'll touch on that in here in just a moment. But this is pres this is um, our use case for preserving your very large preservation quality uh, audio and video that we know um, is typically in the multiple gigabyte file uh, size range. If you have preservation quality audio or video that is under, you know, two or three gigabytes, you can store that entire file within DuraCloud. That is not a problem. Um, but again, this is for the, the very large audio and uh, video files that you could potentially have uh, in your collections. So moving back to my DuraCloud instance for one moment, um, you can see that uh, these individual content items are quite small in the multiple ki kilobyte range, um, and you can very easily store those uh, within DuraCloud. Not a problem. Um, regarding access use cases uh, of preserving uh, access uh, audio and video within DuraCloud, um, DuraCloud itself um, <clears throat> provides a, a streaming service for both audio and video that is stored within DuraCloud that you can then embed into your own applications. So you can stream this Dancing Dog MP4 uh, directly in DuraCloud. And let me just show you that one moment. I have to log back out and log back in. And again, apologies for logging in and logging out. I have various views available to me. Go here one moment. So you can see uh, within DuraCloud, you can very easily uh, stream content. Uh, here on the content detail panel on the right hand side of your screen, you'll see um, a, an MP4 that is available in DuraCloud. And you can then embed that stream as well as our JW uh, video player within your own applications. Um, I actually did do a brown bag on how to do that specifically, embed these video and audio streams into your own applications as well. So feel free to check out that recording. Uh, one thing I'll note again is regarding file size with uh, preserving media in DuraCloud. If you have media files that are under the multiple gigabyte range, you can very easily use our streaming service um, to, to stream them either in DuraCloud or into your own applications. Um, but for the larger video and audio files, we do, we do recommend chunking them to preserve them in DuraCloud. Uh, I'll note that we do not have the ability within DuraCloud to stitch your chunks back together within DuraCloud yet. Um, it is on the, the roadmap to enable that stitching to take place in DuraCloud itself, so you'll have one uh, very large um, preservation file within DuraCloud itself, um, but right now we do not have that available. And of course, um, as you might expect, those individual chunks that I showed earlier are not available for streaming either. Um, not only is that a technical issue on our end, we can't stream the chunks, but also um, I think from a more realistic standpoint, streaming multiple gigabyte files out of the cloud is not only um, technically not a good idea, but also has cost implications. Um, as, as you all may be aware, streaming from the cloud uh, is or can be expensive, and streaming multiple gigabyte files um, probably is not in your best interest. So having a preservation uh, multiple gigabyte file in the cloud um, in a chunk is okay, and then having an access version that is much smaller, lower quality available that you can stream um, is probably a, a better scenario um, when using the cloud. So having both an access and a preservation version of uh, your audio and video files, uh, one in which you can use our streaming service and the other that you can uh, simply preserve in DuraCloud. So with that, um, we are at the one o'clock mark, which I usually like to keep my demos at the at the half an hour uh, window, and then I leave the rest uh, open for questions. So I'm going to um, minimize my screen and bring up my my Adobe session. Um, I feel free, everyone, please, to start asking questions via the chat feature, and I will be sure to either um, go over and clarify anything if there's confusion or answer any questions that you have at this point. 
I can find my window. All right, so I saw that audio was originally intermittently failing. Um, I'm sorry to hear that, Tira. Um, I will have a recording available, and I'll check to make sure that the audio is OK. Uh, if not, I'll, I'll dub it over uh, with the correct audio. So apologies for that. What is the typical cloud storage cost per gigabyte per year? Um, well, you can go to both Amazon and Rackspace and see their cost um, for storing content. I think Amazon, I think it's 10 cents per gigabyte. I think that's per month, not per year. Um, and I think Rackspace is 12. Um, for DuraCloud pricing in particular, um, we charge um, per terabyte per year. We give you a package deal. So, um, and the, the um, subscription plan that I was demoing with earlier is $1,500 a year for the first terabyte and $1,300 a year for each additional terabyte that you store. So if you had two terabytes, it would be $2,800 uh, for a year to store in DuraCloud. Um, but that includes essentially everything. It includes all your upload and download fees, your storage of your content, the services that you could run on top of your content, the integrity checking, the health checking services that we run on your behalf over your content are all included. Um, and it, it includes, obviously, the web application and your ability to view that content, etc. Um, if there's any other questions you have about pricing, Bill, feel free to, to ask. Uh, Kyle asks, just to make sure I understand pricing, do you not need to pay additional cloud charges beyond what is listed uh, for DuraCloud? The only, 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 here's the fine print, the only additional charge that could potentially come in when we're talking about media is uh, downloads or uh, usage of media. So if you have an access media use case where you're using DuraCloud for your access media and you're embedding it into your own applications and you have a lot of users on your, at your local institution um, using that content, so streaming out media from DuraCloud, um, that's when you would have an additional charge. But um, besides the media streaming, every single charge uh, that you could possibly incur is built into the DuraCloud pricing. Um, we wanted to make um, it very easy for our customers to transition to the cloud and not have any of the unknowns uh, that you could potentially have when you're using the cloud. So all of the, the unknowns and quotes are built into the DuraCloud pricing uh, with the sole exception of media streaming. Uh, Preservation Master Video Files, John Dunn uh, asks, can often, or actually says, <laughs> can often range from 20 to 100 plus gigabytes per hour of content. So cloud storage costs can grow very large very quickly. Is DuraSpace exploring any lower cost, lower performance storage options for DuraCloud that might be more cost effective for video preservation? Perfect question, John. And yes, actually, the, um, the cloud storage um, testing that we're currently running with San Diego uh, cloud storage supercomputer cloud storage, sorry, there's a lot of acronyms in there, um, will be much cheaper uh, than the current list price for DuraCloud, simply because we're, we're quoting Amazon and Rackspace storage right now. Um, <clears throat> San Diego supercomputer cloud storage will be, um, I mentioned $1,500 a year for the first terabyte for Amazon and $1,300 a year for additional terabytes, and that was Amazon um, within uh, San Diego Supercomputer, um, don't quote me on this, but it will be substantially cheaper between eight, 800 and and $1,000 a year for uh, one terabyte. So we're talking a couple hundred dollars in savings at the very least um, will be available to store content within the San Diego Supercomputer uh, Center Cloud Storage. And additionally, on top of that, um, it is a non-commercial cloud storage provider. So. Um, for some institutions, that has a, that has a lot of uh, warm and fuzzies uh, when, when we offer a non-commercial cloud storage provider. Uh, in terms of timeline, that should be launching here at the end of the summer, early fall, no later than early fall. We are just starting beta testing with a small group of institutions and hope to roll that out here within the next few months. Other questions regarding uh, audio and video within DuraCloud. Um, a couple things that I forgot to mention, I don't really have a demo for, um, but the DuraCloud project actually um, participated in a, a pilot project here earlier, last fall, beginning of this year, uh, with a couple institutions regarding video and audio transcoding and transformation services. 
uh, re and this is specifically regarding preservation quality um, audio and video files. Um, however, there was no consensus around uh, the types of video and audio files that were preservation standards. So as soon as uh, all of the interested parties in the audio and video spectrum coalesce around uh, a couple file formats that are uh, determined to be preservation standards for both video and audio, uh, we do have on our long-term, DuraCloud's long-term roadmap, uh, video and audio transcoding services. Um, but we're just not quite there yet in terms of uh, the, all of the interested parties coalescing around a particular standard. The technology is there, just uh, the agreement upon a standard is not. So we have yet to make those transcoding services available, but they are on the roadmap. Any other questions that I can answer for folks, um, whether it be around media preservation or access, or the chunking and stitching and sync and retrieval tools that I, that I reviewed today. While everyone is busily thinking of questions, I'm going to review just a couple uh, more things uh, before we end for today, if I can get it to my screen to stay on slide to. Um, of course, it wouldn't be a demo without a good plug. Um, if any of this has piqued your curiosity or you're just interested in uh, trialing DuraCloud on your own for another use case, feel free to submit the trial account form on DuraCloud.org. Uh, you would be uh, then given a DuraCloud trial account free for 60 days with no obligation at the end of that 60 days to continue using DuraCloud whatsoever. So if you are interested in the least, I would highly recommend uh, the 60-day free trial of DuraCloud. Again, that's a production level account. We just limit you in terms of the amount of content that you can upload um, to about 500 gigabytes. But again, um, I would recommend if anybody's interested to try that out. And then uh, one last plug, shameless plug. Um, my next DuraCloud Brown Bag session will be the last Wednesday in July, uh, July 25th. And I'm going to leave this as a summer school open question and answer session. Um, I will come with question, uh, common questions and answers prepared. Um, but for folks who have uh, unrelated use case questions or cloud general questions, um, I will probably pull in a DuraCloud developer as well. So if you have technical questions, either about the managed service or the open source, um, this will be kind of a free-for-all se session um, so that you can get all of your questions uh, answered regarding DuraCloud or the cloud in general. Um, I always, always, always highly recommend sending me topic suggestions. Um, Otherwise, you just get to hear whatever I think is <laughs> of importance. Um, but feel free to send topic suggestions if, if there's something related to DuraCloud or the cloud that you'd like to see covered. And of course, all of the information about today's brown bag as well as past and upcoming brown bags is available on the DuraCloud website. Um, I see I have one more question. Uh, Bill Donovan asks, how many copies of the files are kept in at different locations? Now that's another great question, Bill, and that is dependent upon the DuraCloud subscription for which you, uh, for which you subscribe and pay for. Um, the, the level that I quoted, the $1,500 for the first terabyte, $1,300 a year for additional terabytes, is one copy, and that is stored in the Amazon US East region. Or you can, if you're interested, we could potentially move that to Amazon US West, or um, I think there's a US West Portland or US West uh, California storage location, um, or we could move it to one of the other Amazon locations. Um, the the uh, second step after the that uh, subscription tier or package, um, which is Preservation Basic, is our Preservation Plus service, which keeps two copies, two actual physical copies, like I showed today, one in Amazon and one in Rackspace, um, and that has cost implications. Um, Rackspace has their con or their actual geographic storage. Um, I believe they told us both in Chicago and in Texas, again, U.S. Central-ish, Central West. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, the enterprise packages also allow you to choose whether you want one or multiple copies. Um, referencing John's earlier question, um, we will be having SDSC storage available, um, hopefully here at the end of the summer, like I mentioned. And at that point, um, we'll have a couple additional packages available that you can choose, again, to either have one or multiple copies stored. And again, it depends on your budget and, and where you want those copies stored. Uh, Kyle asks another pricing question, and the pricing for what we upload per subscription plan and not per copy. 
the the um, upload charges um, are all included. Um, so again, um, let me bring up the pricing page. This might make it a little bit more uh, straightforward. The all the upload charges, Kyle, are included in the pricing that's quoted here. So uh, the original package that I quoted, the basic, which was $1,500 a year for the first terabyte, $1,300 for additional, that's one copy of your content in Amazon, um, includes the upload charges for that one copy. The Preservation Plus, which has a copy in Amazon and a copy in Rackspace, which is essentially double the price, $3,000 a year, and then $26 for additional terabytes, um, includes all of the upload fees for those two copies. Um, we, the DuraCloud service, actually create that secondary copy for you. You don't have to upload two copies of your content. You just upload one, one copy, and you're just telling us that you want a secondary copy stored in Rackspace or um, hopefully at the end of the summer in SDSC, um, and we would create that copy for you. Um, again, and all of all of the upload charges, bandwidth, etc., um, is included in that in that fee. Um, there are no uh, additional charges. Okay, Stephanie asks, what metadata standards are used with archive and storage, uh, Dublin Core, for instance? Uh, currently within DuraCloud, there are, other than the property and tags that I showed, um, there is no metadata um, <clears throat> support within DuraCloud. You can certainly upload um, metadata that has been stored in XML uh, files, for instance, so it can store any metadata files, but it doesn't support metadata. It doesn't tie metadata to content items or create collections, etc. So um, DuraCloud itself is file agnostic, so you can store whatever you'd like, um, but it doesn't have that relationship or metadata um, relationship um, capabilities that you might expect in a local repository, for instance. Um, Tira asks, Will there be any operational differences on our end to use SDSC storage? Uh, the question or the answer to that here is no. Um, as I showed today um, in the pull-down window, you could see Amazon or Rackspace. SDSC will just be another option uh, for you to select, and it will not have any other operational differences. Uh, the interface will look the same. You'll still be able to add content, delete content, check the integrity of your content view all of the statistics and reporting uh, within DuraCloud. So no, from your perspective, there will not be uh, any operational differences for storing content in SDSC, other than it'll be uh, very, very cost competitive and much cheaper um, uh, for you to store your content. Great questions, everyone. Feel free to keep uh, adding questions on or ask for clarification if I went over something uh, too quickly today. I'll pause for just a moment while people type. Okay, I don't see any other questions coming in. Um, if anybody does happen to think of a question later on, like I always do, feel free to send me an email at csmith at duraspace.org. Let me bring that up on the screen. Um, I I'm very much thank all of you for taking the time out today, whether it was your lunch or earlier or later in the day for participating in today's session. Thank you all for the great questions. Um, if you have any additional thoughts or recommendations or ideas or constructive criticism, <laughs> anything and everything at all, please send my way at csmith at dorospace.org. And I hope to see you all uh, next month for the summer school session, which will be an open question and answer session regarding DuraCloud and the cloud in general. So again, thank you all, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday.